I'd like to address something that really irritates me, and that is people in the modern world thinking that they can translate the Bible better than the translators of the King James Version. They think that they're more brilliant because they have computer software or a Greek interlinear or something like this. Um, I will tell you that no one in the last 200 years could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the translators of the King James Bible. Um, I forget if it was Lancelot Andrews or it was one of them, but they could read, write, and speak Hebrew as an English-speaking man, <clears throat> excuse me, not man, boy, when they were six years old, six or seven years old, right in there. These guys were writing dictionaries. They were brilliant on a whole different level. And I want to say one other thing about their brilliance. You have to think about the atmosphere that they lived in. These men were raised at a time they never saw pornography, never saw a dirty movie, never heard rock music. There was no chemical pollution, no electronic pollution. Everything that they ate was organic. Think about that one. No fertilizers and things like that. Um, no vaccinations ever. Uh, you know, I mean, just get down through the list. All the things that we struggle with now in our modern time, those men back then, uh, they never went through any of that. And you can tell me, and yet you can say to me that you somehow have a pure, cleaner mind than the men back then in 1604 to 1611. And it wasn't just one, it was 54 when the translation work started and 47 till it was done. It took seven years. I mean, it, you know, seven years. And each, every word of the Bible had to go through seven different tests. Three different committees at Westminster, at, uh, there was one at Westminster, um, Oxford, and one at Cambridge. And somehow you get some little jerk in the comments section and they come out and they say, well, the King James Bible is falsely translated and I can do a better job. I can even show out that there's lots of errors. It's filled with errors. You don't even know what you're talking about. Well, <clears throat> the word Easter, it's a, it, they couldn't have been celebrating Easter in the first century um, because we know that Easter didn't exist until the 800s or something like this or the eighth century or, or something. How do you know that? Well, because our modern dictionaries say this and, and you know, so the translators were awfully dumb and, and whatever in their use of the word Easter. Um, <clears throat> can you talk to the translators? Do you know why they use the word Easter? These weren't foolish people like in our modern world. These men were brilliant on a level you can't even fathom. <clears throat> and again, seven years. And I've told this story before in another uh, video, but there was a young man that came out after the King James Bible was translated and this young man was preaching in a church building someplace and uh, <clears throat> one of the translators of the King James Bible was sitting there in the church. And this young man opened up the King James Bible, the authorized version back then they would have called it. King James Version is just a nickname for it, but authorized version is what it's originally called. And this young man opened it up and he went off about how that uh, this is an unfortunate translation. And unfortunately this, not, you know, the, the better translation would be that and whatever. And he got done. And he walked up to this older, one of the actual translators, and he said, uh, I do hope that you take this to heart and whatever. And, and this translator said to him, well, young man, um, we considered what your evidence was and also had multiple reasons why we went with the translation we did. And you're not aware of any of those. Had to put the guy in his place. Uh, we're not dealing, see, the, the evolutionary mindset is what poisons people. They think we're smarter today than they were in 1611. And that's not true. That's not true at all. Um, those guys back then were brilliant. I mean, they're tutors to, to the queen and things back then. And, and just scholars of just a whole different level. And 54 of them. But now <clears throat> some people come out and you'll see it in the comments. Oh, it's badly translated and whatever else. Um, all those people are, is they are servants of Satan. I will tell you that. They're just trying to throw you off. Um, if the King James Bible had been a bad translation, the Bible teaches, it, the scripture teach this thing and it's just a rational, logical concept. And that is, if this work or this counsel be of men, it will come to naught. <clears throat> well, did the King James Bible come to naught? No, it didn't. 
You say, well, it's just because of uh, marketing or something. King James Bible's not marketed. Are you kidding me? Um, people try to latch on to it and things because of its tremendous power and success, but uh, it didn't come to naught. And the reason for that is because it's God's book. It is a supernatural book. It is inspired, divinely inspired by God. Uh, and I've proven that. And so have millions of other Christians down through the centuries. It's the greatest book that ever showed up on this earth. Documented, proven fact. Well, I don't like that. I don't agree with that. Well, then you're going to hell. Uh, that's just the simple truth of it. You know, it took me, I don't even know how many years, many years to find a original copy of the revised version of 1881. Um, I have one in my collection. The American Standard Version. I searched a long time for one of those. Um, but yet they were touted in their day as being the greatest, uh, newest uh, discoveries. And, and we have the Sinaiticus, and um, that now shows us the more ancient readings, and we have to go with the more ancient readings. Uh, the whole thing was a big Masonic scam. Manly Palmer Hall talked about getting rid of the King James Version. Reading a book right now, one of you sent me um, from David Daniels on uh, the fact that the Sinaiticus manuscript is completely false. I forget which one of you sent it to me, but thank you. You know who you are. And, uh, you know, I finally was able to pick the book up, and I'm starting to read it, and I'm just realizing, you know, there's so many problems with this story of Constantine von Tischendorf with, <clears throat> oh, I found some, you know, ancient manuscripts in the waste paper, paper thing, and they were going to start a fire with it. That's not even a true statement. It's nonsense. Because the Sinaiticus, um, uh, Manuscripts that make up the Sinaiticus Codex, uh, <clears throat> they're written on vellum. Who would start a fire with vellum, with basically animal skin? You don't start a fire with that. <laughs> I mean, maybe a papyrus fragment or something, maybe that's, you know, plant-based, but starting a fire with animal skin? It was all just a big scam, is what this thing was all about. So... But uh, I won't go off on that. I'll be doing a video on that in the future when I'm done reading the book. But uh, so far, a very good book. I have some doctrinal issues with um, men like David Daniels and, and Sam Gipp, but when it comes to their defense of the King James Bible, uh, both very excellent authors, and I would recommend their books. Uh, definitely. No question about it. But um, just to just get back to this thing, you can spend all your time debating these people over this Hebrew word should be translated this way or that Greek word should be translated this way or that way or whatever else, but go back to the same, you can go back to the, the single argument, and that is, if the King James Bible was a terrible translation and was not God's inspired word, God would have gotten rid of it, just like he did with these new versions. They come along to replace the King James Bible, you can't even find them anymore. Um, there's nobody walking around saying, you know, the revised version of 1881, it's God's book. <laughs> and all these guys do is they just keep pumping out these new versions periodically. Oh, here's an, another one and another one and another one. This one's better. This one corrects it this time. You, can, you don't have to worry. This is the, the best one, the most accurate English translation. And it's, again, that's a lie. I can prove that to be a lie. The New American Standard Version or New American Standard Bible, NASB. Oh, we know for a fact that this is the most accurate. Uh, no, it isn't actually because they don't include the deuterocanonical books or apocryphal books as part of the inspired text. The King James Bible originally had the apocryphal books, but between the Old and New Testament, just, okay, there it is, historical value. It wasn't because they believed that they were part of the inspired text. Okay, don't believe that lie either. Well, it was originally in the King James Bible. You know, you can spend your time studying the, the manuscript evidence and all the textual criticism and everything else which i've done many years ago or you can just simply say hey you know what this book has been used mightily by the lord for hundreds of years and it's still in print it's still popular people still talk about the king james bible our english language so much of our english language is based upon what the translators wrote back then in, in 1604 to 1611 uh, again, these guys were masters of the English language. They actually were helping to create the English language. 
That's why there's some variation between 1611 and 1769 because the English language was changing. The font that they were using was changing. A lot of the spelling of words was changing. So, um, what I teach and what I preach at this ministry, at King James Video Ministries, what I preach and teach is faith in a book. Looking at the book and saying, I believe that this is God's book. What the new version people teach is doubt. That's all that they will ever give you. A James White or, you know, D.A. Carson or any of these other lost devils. All that they can get, John MacArthur, there's another one, kick him too. All that they will give you is doubt. That's all that they can, you'll come away with. Well, I think the Greek word here should be translated this way. Well, we do have a good translation in the New American Standard Bible, but we have to come out with a legacy standard Bible that will correct a few of the minor errors. Is it perfect? No, we still have to come out with another one. There, as, as the Nestle's text is updated and as we get more you know, manuscripts and, well, I don't know if we're getting any more manuscripts because every manuscript discovery that they find actually defends the King James Bible and the Textus Receptus. Hmm, yeah. Again, over 6,000. Back when I was first getting into this, it was, you know, 4,000 some uh, extant Greek manuscripts that had been collated. Um, extant meaning you can touch it. It's not just theoretical like the original autographs. You can actually touch the thing and see it. It's at a museum or a seminary someplace or whatever else. But of the ones that have been collated, they go through them, they look at them, 99% of all Greek manuscripts, 99%, over 99%, line up with the Texas Receptus, which underlies the King James Bible. Huh. Um, so when you hear the thing of, well, we found better manuscripts and whatever, it's all just a, a satanic Masonic lie. Just insane. And, you know, I repeated some of the lies because of the whole... Uh, Constantine von Tischendorf fly thing of, of uh, you know, the, the waste paper basket and we found Sinaiticus and it was this ancient manuscript and everything else. It wasn't ancient. It was a forgery. And I believe Vaticanus is also a forgery. It starts to put things into perspective. You know, you start to realize, huh, if these things are forgeries, then that would mean that my King James Bible, I don't have anything to worry about with it. It's actually the... Uh, best of the best so just wanted to make a quick little video here just you know I get in arguments with these idiots uh, a lot and they'll come out and they'll say you know I, I quote something something from the King James Bible try to, to get truth out and they'll say well I know what you're saying but I wouldn't use the King James Bible because it's riddled with errors <laughs> and what's what's the error well this uh this Greek word could be translated differently. Okay, that's not really an error. That's you not understanding why it was translated the way it was. That's just showing your ignorance. It's not an error in the King James Bible. Um, you know, and they'll come out with all their things too. Whatever. Uh, the best thing to do with these people is just ignore them. Um, trust the Word of God, the King James Bible. Oh. Uh, why should you trust it? Well, because millions of other Christians have. Um, it's the cure for sin. It's the cure for being lost. You want to go to heaven? Get a King James Bible. Read it and believe it. Don't let anybody ever take it from you. These wicked devils, they come out and they say, well, actually, a better translation, and I think that you should go to the, you know, please get a Greek interlinear. Um, well, half the time, the uh, lexicons and interlinears and things are lost, written by lost people. Oh, uh, make sure you get a the most recent copy of the Nestle Alan text. Um, oh, you mean the Nestle that uh, was basically working for the Pope, Kurt Alan, the same thing? Lost wicked devils. So, uh, and the Nestle Alan text that was made under the supervision of the Vatican. Yeah, that's what you want there, boy. That'll lead you into the truth. Don't go with the uh, King James Bible. It's been proved to be God's word over and over again. So, <laughs> but anyhow, I have to get down to the office now. Just wanted to make a little video here ranting about this nonsense, these wicked people that come along and try to wreck your faith in the King James Bible. 
don't waste your time on them. Um, these people all have one thing in common, and that is they are the final authority. They will recommend certain versions. I prefer this, I prefer that, and I prefer the Greek word here, and I prefer this, and I, you know, it's all their preferences, what they want. That's what it is. They are their own gods. So that will be it. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to put some videos here at the end that will teach you about the Bible version issue if you are ignorant of it. So please check those out and we'll see you in the next video.